God bless you. You are on live with a wealthy place, Church of God in Christ. We thank God for his mercy, for his kindness, for his deliverance from sin and unrighteousness. We have not been on, I guess, in a good while. We've been we've been broadcasting from our uh, WordPress site uh, for Women's History Month. But this month, we're going to continue the from when we were on live last, um, talking about angels this month of April, we'll be talking about angels and not us, but we'll be relaying a broadcast by a powerful, powerful, powerful prophet. His name is Prophet Daniel um, Um, And we're going to be uh, sharing his messages on angels. Powerful, powerful. One of the most powerful messages I've ever heard dealing with angels and how they're there to help us. We know that uh, that God can save us, that he can deliver us, that he can give us his Holy Spirit, which gives us that mountain-moving faith and the power of God. And so we have Jesus, we have this Holy Spirit with us. But in addition to that, God has given us angels that will help us in our journey. And I hope you are blessed by this. As I, I mentioned this before, that my mother said she named me after the angel Michael. And, uh, and just by studying it, I learned that Michael was the archangel of war. Michael was the archangel, not was, but is. He is the archangel of war. And he has legions, meaning a groups of angels that follow him in war. Powerful, powerful. And I'm named after Michael, the archangel of war. Uh, I thank God for his mercy, for his kindness. He's been so, so good. As you may or may not know, we've uh, released our uh, first two full, uh, not full length, but partial, one partial length and one full length books. We thank God for those books. Truly, the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. Um, our first book is basically a really more so Kojic, uh, what we've done in Kojic in terms of how, how we were, um, the ministries that we've joined in Kojic, bishops and things that we've worked with, pastors. Um, and that book is called uh, Our Church, A Wealthy Place. Our Church, A Wealthy Place. That's the first book. That's a short one, but you can get that on um, Amazon. It's on Kindle. It's in paperback. Uh, soon to be audio. And uh, and then to expand on that, I did an expansion on the first book. This is more pages in the first book. This deals with my life, not just my ministry, but my life in terms of my Wall Street career, the fraternities that I've been part of, um, technology that I've been part of, uh, schools that I've been part of, um, and basically more of that, more of my life, my ministry, and my business, Holman's World, uh, my technology company. Uh, most of these pages in, in, in the book deal with my the websites and things that I've actually worked with. So I thank God for that. Truly, the Lord is good, and he is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Uh, we thank God for, his, for all that he's done for us. Truly, truly, the Lord has been good. He's been so good, so good. As I mentioned before, uh, you know, I'm on Clubhouse. I think the Clubhouse is uh, Tiny URL, T-I-N-Y URL, the same one that's scrolling to the bottom, not the same one, but the beginning, tinyurl.com forward slash. You can choose uh, forward slash uh, follow me on Clubhouse. And you'll get my Clubhouse site immediately. Of course, if you follow me on uh, Amazon, you'll get my Amazon site. I think it's follow me on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube now. You get my YouTube site. Follow me on TikTok now, I believe. And you'll get my TikTok site. It's either follow me on TikTok now or just follow me on TikTok. But they all start. They all start with tinyurl.com forward slash. And those are the uh, things that I've been on. Truly, the Lord has been good. He's been merciful. He's been kind. We thank God for uh, different social mediums. Uh, right now, we're on uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, so many different mediums that they have. We thank God to be able to share with you the gospel. The Bible says that this gospel shall be preached into all the world. 
And I believe when that scripture was written, it meant the online world, because that lets us reach people all over the world. We thank God for his mercy. We thank him for his kindness. He's been so compassionate to us. Oh, bubble shine. We give him the praise. We give him the glory. We give him the honor. Let us go to God in prayer. Handala boshai. Oh, bubble We thank you for your mercy. Handala boshai. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. There is none like you in all of the earth. There is none like you. Handala boshai. There's power in your name, deliverance in your name. Somebody today, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, does not know you in the pardoning or forgiving of their sin, let them know if they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, and if they believe in their heart that you have risen him from the dead, they can be saved. If they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you have risen your son from the dead, they can be saved. They can not only that, they can receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost, that keeping, saving, delivering power needed as we come out of this global pandemic. Not only that, oh God, let them know as we're going to learn this whole month that you have commissioned angels to work with us. The angels don't want to be praised by us, but they're here to work with us. They are fellow servants. They serve you just like we serve you, but they have power to help us in this warfare because we are in a warfare. We are in a warfare against the enemy, but only with God's power and his angels that are with us and the Holy Spirit in us can we win this warfare. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities spiritual wickedness in dark places. Wherefore, take on the whole armor of God, whereby you may be fed with, fed and glorified in God. We thank God for the whole armor of God. Thank you for the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, our loins being girded about with truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Father, we thank you for the spiritual warfare you've given us. And we thank you for the angels that are there to work with us. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Somebody right now needs healing. Oh, God, you're a healer. You are the Lord that healeth us. You are the Lord, our healer. You sent your word and healed our disease. You are the Lord, our healer. Heal that person today, wherever they might be, in a hospital, in a home, in a detention center, in a prison facility, wherever the people might be, you are our healer. We say yes to your will, yes to your way. We believe and trust in you. We're giving you our problem. That problem we've been trying to figure out since last year and the years before. We give it all to you today. We say yes to your will. You are the answer for everything that we need. That thing we're trying to figure it out, we give it to you. And we say yes to your will, to your way. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you the glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. We thank God for his mercy and his kindness. We're going to now um, share uh, Prophet Daniel Amoting uh, talking about angels. Be blessed, be encouraged, be uplifted. Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. Um, I've been speaking about the roles angels play in warfare angels and warfare angels have a role to play in your life when it comes to spiritual warfare say angels and warfare angels and warfare you know and i've I've made you to know from tuesday that we have different departments of angels the same way in the government sector we have the ministry of defense ministry of finance ministry of health in the angelic kingdom we have different departments you know one angel that is in charge of warfare defense is the archangel Michael. Say Michael. Michael. We have one angel responsible for information. And that information angel is called Gabriel. So anytime God wants to give an information, Gabriel is supposed to release that information. And today we are about to see how that department of warfare does Gabriel, uh, sorry, Michael, you activate that particular angel. It's very strange that the angels are there, but if you don't activate them, They'll be standing by you doing nothing. By the time we are through, 
God will give us the power and show us how to activate our angels in Jesus' name. Amen. And every warfare that is in front of you, there's going to be victory for your life in Jesus' name. Tell me, shout, I am powerful. I am powerful. One more time. I am powerful. Amen. Amen. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And um, the week of our youth day and the children's day, on that particular week, I'll be praying for everybody's child. Amen. So in that week, on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, if you have any child at all, can bring your children. If they're not here, bring your pictures or write your names. And we shall climb us it on the Sunday, the 28th. It's going to be a joint service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But what happened to the dragon? And the dragon was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. Verse 9. The great dragon was held down. The ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. Who leads the whole world astray. He was held to the earth. And his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven and said. Now have come the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been brought down. So heaven is happy because devil has been thrown down. And the earth is in trouble because the devil has come down. So they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Amen. Give me the verse of seven and we will sit down. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, they fought. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, they fought. Help me to speak to somebody and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Activate. Activate. Angel Michael. Angel Michael. Say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Angel Michael. Angel Michael. Is waiting. Is waiting. To fight for you. To fight for you. You may be seated. There are different departments of angels. The one we will capitalize and work on seriously is the angel of defense responsible for warfare. And there was war in heaven. It will surprise you to know that even in heaven, there was war. If there was war in heaven, then definitely in your life, there is going to be war. Where God stays, where God lives, where there's supposed to be absolute peace, the Bible says, and there was war. Ask somebody, what is the war you are going through? What is the war you are going through? Where God dwells, all of a sudden, war showed up. The strange thing about war in life is this. Sometimes you don't plan to go for war. War comes at your doorstep. War comes in front of your house. War comes in front of your life. Many people normally ask themselves this question. I love everybody. I don't have problem with everybody. But why is everybody having a problem with me? Unfortunately, that's what life is about. If I don't fight you and you don't fight me, life would have been so good. So I will make sure I don't stand on your feet. And because I don't stand on your feet, you too will not stand on my feet. But whether I stand on your feet or not, battle will show up one day. And this kind of war we are talking about is called the battle of spiritual warfare. Whether you believe it or not, there is warfare going on behind the scenes. As you are jumping up and down, moving up and down, try as, as much as possible for you to have a decent life. Behind the scenes, there is warfare. You are busy with your life, making sure that everybody is smiling, everybody is good, but behind the scenes, there is warfare. The warfare is designed to take you out of existence. The warfare is designed for you to go through shame. The warfare is designed for you to go through disgrace. But there is one thing about God that in the midst of warfare, he also places a provision for us that in the midst of warfare, he will give us supernatural victory. Amen. 
is there anybody here that believe that in their warfare god is about to give them supernatural victory The person you are eating with right now, you don't know what is inside of their mind connected to the food you are eating. The chair you want to sit on over that place, you don't know what was done on that chair. The vehicle you sat in, if God was supposed to open your eyes to know what was designed against you on the road of that journey, you understand that there is warfare. The kind of disease designed against your health, you have no idea. There is warfare. There is wizards and witchcraft. This is what people don't want to hear. But whether you like it or not, there is witches, wizards, witchcraft. There are different powers working around. But the reason why we move with confidence is because we are not afraid of their devices. We are not afraid of their powers because something is behind us and something is inside of us. And what is behind us and inside of us is called the power of the living God. Yes. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 says, No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. It says, No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. It means... If the Bible says no weapon, it means somebody will try to use a weapon. But it says no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Somebody shout, there is warfare. There is warfare. When you read the book of Psalm 41, David said, "By my enemies speak evil of me. And what they say is one, one thing. They say, when will he die and his name perish? Is there? Check it right now my enemies speak evil of me and there's only one question that he asks him when shall he die and his name perish power of worship first service i want to ask you one question who is asking this question right now in your family when will she die so as a matter of fact the assignment for you not to be alive is for just one reason they are afraid of your name because he says when will he die and his name perish so what they, what they are trying as much as possible to achieve is that they want your name to perish so anytime somebody calls your name your name gives them a heart attack right but hear me if my name is going to give the devil a heart attack then, then listen to me let them get ready for more heart attacks because somebody hear me you are not dying today or tomorrow but the power of god will cover your life in the name of jesus shout i will not die i will not die look at it my enemies speak evil of me so they ask the question when will she die when will he die and his name perish I want to ask you this question again. Who is asking that question? Is he a friend? Is he a colleague? Is he a next door neighbor? Or is he a family member? Or is, is it an ex-friend? I stand on the altar in Jesus' name. Jesus. Whoever is asking some... Whoever is asking some crazy questions by the reason of the power of God, I stop it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare right now, you will not die. Amen. I said, You will not die. Amen. Shout, I will not die. I will not die. But I will live long. But I will live long. Now, hear me. So, now that we know that questions have been asked, weapons have been thrown, God is so good that God created an exit door for us. That Daniel, in the midst of the warfare, there is a department of angels have created. And that angels are the angels of warfare. That in the midst of the battle, command those angels and they will fight for you. So one day in the book of Daniel chapter 10, the Bible says, Daniel prayed and God answered Daniel. But for 21 days, answers were not coming. But God said, Daniel, the day, the first time you prayed, I gave you the answer. But Daniel said, God, for 21 days, no answer. There's a problem. Then Daniel checked, he saw, said, wow, my answers were released, but there is a spirit in the atmosphere that is called the Prince of Persia. That when the answers of Daniel were coming, the Prince of Persia went to block the answers. Who has blocked your answers? 
what has blocked your answers the bible said the woman the prince of persia was blocking the answer the bible says god activated the angels of warfare michael look at it right now but the prince of the persian kingdom resisted me for 21 days then michael one of the chief princes he came to help me because i was detained there with the king of persia michael came to help Today I speak and I command Michael, Amen. I declare Michael in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. You can control Michael. Because right now you are like Jesus. You are a child of God. You carry the power of God. You can control angels. So I activate from the Michael's kingdom right now. That in the name of Jesus. We activate them for your life now. Amen. Any weapon perform against your life. Jesus. We activate angel Michael. Yeah. Shout activate. Activate. So Michael came. And Michael came to fight. Now check Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 to speak about Michael over there. It calls Michael one of the chief princes. One of the strong angels. At that time, Michael, the chief prince, the great prince, who protects your people. So the next thing Michael does, that angel, and hear me, Michael is an archangel. Every archangel has millions of angels under him. So he is the minister of defense, and many, many soldiers are under him. So Michael comes to protect. Today I release the grace of protection. Jesus. In the midst of warfare, I charge the angels of protection yeah. around your life, around your family, around wherever you go right now. Shout protection. Protection. Shout it one more time. Protection. Listen, if there is any arrow sent against you, Jesus. Let the angels of protection let them stop it right now. Amen. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Now we're going to our test. And it says now there was war in heaven. Now the war that was in heaven. The Bible says all of a sudden. Michael and his angels. So it calls Michael and his angels. So Michael is in charge. And other angels are also. And they fought against the dragon. I declare against every dragon in the name of Jesus. Jesus. What is a dragon? Any that is looking for blood. Any dragon looking for blood. Any dragon looking for your blood. Any dragon looking for your blood. I activate my angel Michael Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Now, I'm about to show you something right now. That I guess you are time that. This angel has to be activated. You have no idea. Everybody here knows about Moses. Somebody say Moses. Moses. When Moses died, the Bible says when Moses died, man of God, come for illustration. When Moses died, Moses died, man of God, just lie down some more. The Bible says when Moses died, Satan went to the body of Moses, man of God, come. So I want to show a lot of mysteries in the Bible. When Satan went to the body of Moses, if somebody dies and Satan comes to the body, you know what is going to happen? What's going to happen? Good. When you die and Satan comes by your body, sister, a kwano swana no. And, 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 and hear me, this time around, it's not anybody else, it is Moses. Because the time Moses was dying, God was angry with Moses. So Satan saw that God was angry with Moses. So Satan said, ah, this guy tormented me seriously. So Satan came to come and carry the body of Moses. And Satan was ready to take the body. Until Archangel Michael showed up and said to Satan, Satan, come on, stop what you are doing. Okay, 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 Jude, look at it right now. But even the Archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him. But Archangel Michael said, Satan, may the Lord rebuke you. Then Satan left. The Moses body went into heaven. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. Listen. 
listen, listen. Let, let me show you some things about this Moses we are talking about. The reason why Satan came by his body because of the sins that he has committed. The Torah chapter 32 verse 50. I want to show you right now. Look at it right now. There on the mount that you, you, you climb, this God talking to Moses. You will die there and be gathered to your, your people as your brother Aaron died and was gathered to his people. Let's go. This is because both of you broke faith with me in the presence of the Israelites in the desert of Zin and because you did not uphold my holiness among the Israelites. Therefore, you shall only see the promised land from a distance, but you will not enter. I'm giving to the people of Israel. So, Satan saw that when Moses was dying, God was angry. So Satan came by the body of Moses. He's about to carry the Nyaji or the Ko. Today, any Satan that has come to carry something around your life and they think they are on their way going. Today, I activate Archangel Michael. I declare right now, I activate that particular angel. I activate that angel. May that angel stop the Satan on their way right now in the name of Jesus. I place that angel by your house, by your bedroom, by your family, by your children. Let the grace of God, let the blood of Jesus, let the spirit of the Lord be activated right now. Somebody shout Jesus. Now, now, let, now let me show you some things about this Moses. This Moses, that because of one sin, Satan came close. Let me show you how powerful Moses used to be. How powerful. Numbers chapter 12, verse of 3. Numbers chapter 12, verse of 3. It says, now Moses was very humble man. And more humble than anyone else in the face of the earth. So this guy is a humble man. But because of one sin, Satan is coming. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. Who, who Moses used to be? He said, listen to my words. This is what, what, what God is saying. When prophet is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions and I speak to them in dreams. But look at Moses. But this is not so for my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I speak face to face clearly. So Moses and God, it was not dreams and vision. Moses and God, they were friends. They were talking face to face. But because of one issue, Satan is coming by the body. He says he sees the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And now the devil is coming to the body. Until Archangel Michael from nowhere showed up. Today, at every last moment, listen, when they think they have finished you, and you are the, at your last, I declare it as I said, at the last minutes, when all hope is lost, when all hope is gone, I despise the workability of angels. Let them fight on your behalf. Somebody shout Jesus. I said at the last moment, let God arise. At the last moment, let the angels be activated. At the last moment, let there be a church in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Let me show you. Let me show you the, another side of Moses. 34 verse 10. Let me show you the other side of Moses. 34 verse 10. Deuteronomy. Let's go. The other side of Moses. Look at it right now. He says, since then, no prophet has ever risen in Israel like Moses. Who knew the Lord face to face? Who did all those miraculous signs and wonders of the Lord? And the Lord sent him to Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his officials. Verse 12. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in all of Israel. But right now, at his last moment, Satan was coming for his body. What have you started? And how is it going? May you not start well. 
and end bad never i come against it i said you not start well and end bad in jesus name you start well and end well or you start bad and end well in the name of jesus then satan came by the body and when satan came by the body let's see what the archangel said verse 9 jude 1 9 he says but said may the lord rebuke you i like the translation of the nlt look at what the nlt said it says this took place when michael was arguing with the devil about the body of moses power of course i want to ask you one question what is the argument going on behind the scenes about your life so a, a group of people have sat somewhere and they have an argument about your life, about your destiny. Yen yen say, yen yen say, yen yen say, yen yen say. Any kind of argument going on. You hear me? Listen, you don't need to reply them. In the midst of the argument, Michael will show up in the name of Jesus. I said in the midst of arguments, Michael will show up. Look at the message translation. Look at the message translation. Look at it right now. It says, I like what the message translation said. It said the archangel Michael, who, who, who went to the mats, to the mats with the devil. So Moses is lying on the mats uh, and fought over the body of Moses, who didn't the, the level with a blasphemous curse. But I like what Michael said. He says, no, Satan, no, you don't. No, you don't. But for Daniel, the meaning for no, you don't. When somebody is about to do something, you tell the person, Hey, no, you don't. It means whatever you have started doing, stop it now. Today, I came to declare in the supernatural. Any activity going on against you, I declare right now. No, devil, you don't. I declare in the name of Jesus. If anything is designed against your life from now to the end of the year, I speak in the name of Jesus. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. In the crisis, I declare. No, you don't. Somebody shout, no. One more time, let's go. Again. For the last time, clap your hands and bless God. So hear me. So we have this angel responsible for warfare. And the next, the, 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 this angel, they are armies of angels. When they show up, their assignment is to fight. From now to this conference, it's a fighting moment. That's right. Church of God, hear me. If you don't fight, something will fight you. Whether you like or not, fighting is coming so you better start fighting right now to gain the victory in the name of jesus Amen. psalm 103 verse 20 look at it right now psalm 103 verse 20 he says praise the lord all the angels and the mighty ones and let's go to 21 and give you the message bible over there look at it right now he says bless god all you armies of angels are led to respond so the angels are army do you know an army ghana army every day they are there where Michelle camp and the other one, Bema camp. Every day they are dead, they are let, waiting for the day battle will come and they will fight. So these angels, they are called armies of angels. They are alert to respond. So at any moment, but I'm asking you one question. In your house right now, is an angel alert there? In your life, is an angel alert? Some of you, your angels are not alert. Your angels are sleeping. Because angels have to be activated. When they are activated, they are alert and ready to fight. Armies of angels. Today, I declare, if your angels are sleeping, oh I came to activate them right now. Amen. Let the armies of angels, let them go in advance and fight on your behalf. Amen. Somebody shout, oh God, oh God, fight for me. Fight for me. Psalm 91 verse 11. Psalm 91 verse 11. Let's see what the angel of God does in the life of the believer. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. I like that sign. Let's go eat it. He says he ordered his angels to guard you where? Wherever you go. Now let's all read together. One, two, three. Let's go. He ordered his angels to guard you. Shh, shh. You've made a big mistake. 
Me, say me. Me. One, two, three, let's go. He ordered his angels to guard me wherever I go. One more time, let's go. He ordered his angels to guard me wherever I go. For the last time. He ordered his angels to guard me wherever I go. To guard you where? Wherever I go. Where? Wherever I go. Where? Wherever I go. So in the place, yes. I speak in the name of Jesus. My God. I stand on this word of the living God. Jesus. May God order his angels to guard us wherever we go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If there's any pain, Jesus. if there's any pain God. in front of us, Jesus. let the angels be sent wherever we go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak right now. Jesus. From from January all the way to December, Jesus. any affliction Jesus. against your life, let the angels follow after you Amen. wherever you. Sit down. I have ten minutes to go. Sit down. I have ten minutes to go. I will give you about four ways to activate your angels. Now look at it right now. Verse twelve. Look at verse twelve. If you stumble, they will catch you. Okay, do you understand? If you stumble, man of God, come. I want you to come and catch him. So let's say he's walking. So you are walking from January to December. You are going. You are going. In case you stumble, the angels will. <laughs> What happens after stumbling is falling. I said, what happens after stumbling is what? But God says, before you fall, they will catch you. I place them in front of your bedroom, in front of your house, in front of your children, wherever you go. Where when you stumble, may they catch you. When you stumble, may they catch you. Listen to me. Now, 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 look at your job. The Bible says their job is to keep you from falling. So their job, listen. So if you are falling, your angels are not doing their job. Their job is to keep you from where? That's their job is to keep you from falling. In the trap set in front of you to fall in life in the name of jesus i activate archangel michael with all his men with all his agents may they hold you up may they hold you up in the name of jesus so the shout i will not fall shout on your feet and sit down and say i will not fall now shout i will not fall shout i will not fall now sit down Clap your hands and bless God. Let me give you just this last two. Now, when you are stumbling, you will not fall. You will not fall into a pit. You will not fall into death. You will not fall into disgrace. You will not fall into shame. You will not fall into poverty amen you will not fall so i will not fall i will not fall he said your job is to keep you from falling most of you your angels are sleeping you've not activated them do you know that when jesus christ was 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 in the garden of gethsemane and the soldiers came to arrest him and peter to the this thing to cut off the ear jesus said ah peter wait you don't even know that i can command 12 12 12 companions of angels to fight for me. And the 12 companions of angels, the 12 companions of angels, say 12 legends of angels. Give to me Matthew chapter 26, verse 53. The 12 legends, a legend is 6,000 men. So 12 legends is 6,000 times 12. Give it to me right now. How many are there? 72,000. He says, if you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legends of angels so one legend is 6,000 12 
times six is 72,000, right? So he says, if you're going through warfare at once, 12,000 angels can be sent around your family. I declare in the name of Jesus, Jesus. I release 12 legends, 12 legends, 12 legends of angels, 12 legends of angels in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the oil in this house, Jesus. By the grace in this house, yes, Lord. I take your feet from shame, Amen. your feet from calamity. Amen. In the midst of warfare, Jesus. May God give us victory. Amen. Somebody shout victory! Victory! Now! Now! Sit down for a minute. Sit down for a minute. Exodus chapter twenty-three, verse twenty. Look at what the angels of God will do. He says, "See." Someone says, "See." see i can't feel you see again see again see he says see i'm sending an angel ahead of you to guard you so angels don't only protect us they go in front of us we are in october tomorrow is november i release an angel for november amen okay we are in october i release an angel for december amen we are in 2021 I release an angel for 2022. Amen. Let them go ahead of us. Amen. It says, and guard you along the way and bring you to the place I have prepared. So when the angels protect you, they locate you and place you where God wants you to be. It is at any point in time where God wants you to be, an angel will direct you. Amen. I speak in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I release the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace of God to give us victory right now. Say Jesus, Jesus. Now I'm going to give you about five ways, five ways to activate your angels. Now you know that the angels will fight for you; they will do this thing for you. But five ways to activate for you. Before I give you the five ways for the angels to be activated in your life, I want to give you one particular prayer point. Can I give you a prayer point? I read. I was reading my Bible and I got to a place, and the Bible said, "And God sent." frogs into the bedrooms of Pharaoh. When I got there, I said, sometimes it's like God likes to play. Then God said, he's not playing. He, he, he wants to show your enemies he's in charge. God sent frogs into Pharaoh's bedroom. Sister, if God can send frogs to Pharaoh's bedroom, then God can send anything at all to your enemies' camp. That's right. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. I said, then God can use everything to the enemy's camp. 105.30. 105.30. Let's go, Psalms. I read the Bible, I got and said, wow. He said, their lands were teamed with frogs, which went into the bedrooms of their rulers. That is the king, that's the pharaoh. Give the other translations as well. In the days of the people of Israel, NLT, let's go. Then frogs overran the land and invaded the king's bedrooms. Jesus. Okay, sorry, it's not one bedroom. How many bedrooms? Plenty bedrooms. So God sent frogs to the king's bedrooms. Listen to me. There is warfare. I said there is warfare. And you are supposed to use all the weapons you have to fight. In the midst of that conference, I will show you the different weapons we have. The weapons of wind, water, fire tender hailstones stones rocks mountains trees all of them can fight for the believer this week and next week i'm only showing you the workings of the angels and in the name of jesus god shall be with you amen you know some painful things happen in life and when it happens you don't have to play with life you've got to be serious with life last wednesday i called a young lady to pray for and I said to the young lady, you're not supposed to be in Ghana by now. You're supposed to have, you have supposed to be, you know, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to travel by now. Do you remember? And I, and I said, where's your father? I said, my father is dead. I said, what happened? He said, my father lived in where? UK or USA? UK. He said, the father lived in UK for more than 20 years. And the father came to Ghana to come and do papers for her. When the father came to Ghana, the father died. Tuesday, sorry. Wednesday. Some serious wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. He lived in UK all his life, coming to do papers, and she's the only child of the father. As I said, we was able to put the embassy. He said we didn't even get to the embassy. He died. The only son, the only daughter of the father. 
And when you are fighting some of this warfare, sister, you better fight. Because there are battles going on behind the scenes. But hear me, I activate my kill. Amen. Oh, I, can, I say, I activate my kill. Amen. Let them go and give you victory right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some shout victory. Victory. Let me give you this one. Let, let me give you this one before I give you the five things to activate. Wow, I have five minutes to finish. Let me give you this one too. There's one thing I want you to know is this. Every day when you are praying, tell God that God, don't let my enemies get me so that my enemies will use me to brag. Okay, okay, let me explain. Don't let my enemies get me. Otherwise, they will use me to brag. So let me explain to you. When the enemy succeeds in putting trouble on you, when the enemy is fighting another person, say, hey, if you joke, I will do you like the way I did this one. So the enemies will use you to brag. Any enemy Jesus. that will use you to mark, my God. I declare by Yemi, they will not use you to brag, but they will use you as a lesson. Amen. That the last time they tried you, they couldn't survive, and God fought them in the name of Jesus. You know, you know, when we were young, there is a particular, I think, series that they used to show on TV. If you, most of you don't remember, it was from Japan. Do you know Oshin? Do you remember? What happened to Oshin? What happened to Oshin? What happened? Oh, what happened? Suffering. So, m- most times, Kumase, you know, that's Kumase people. When they are not talking to somebody, say, hey, brace Oshin. So they are using no sin as a yastic of a case. So sometimes people struggle. They say, well, you are open blessed So sometimes, if you're not careful, the enemy will use your name as a yastic for case. But in Jesus' name. Jesus. 1028. Let me see something there. Uh-huh. Look at it. It says, all day long, my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. So if you joke, they will use your name as a curse. They say the way I will fight you like the way I fought this one. Listen to me. Your name cannot be used as a curse. Amen. Um um um. Brace your shin. Amen. Obi so brace your foul di ense hoda never. It will not happen. Someone shout, no way. No way. One more time, let's go. No way. For the last time. No way. I won't speak about workings of angels without giving you this particular test. Second, second Kings chapter 19, verse 35. When, when the king of Assyria came against the people of Israel and they were running away, they were down, they prayed unto God. And God did something for them. I like this one. The Lord sent an angel. It says, that night, the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, all of them were dead bodies. One angel killed 185,000 men, soldiers. And when they woke up, the enemies were dead bodies. I think I can pause here and end here. Let the enemies against you become dead bodies. Amen. Oh, I can't I can feel somebody. I said, let them become dead bodies. Let them become dead bodies. Okay, hear me. Whoever wants your body to become dead body, let your bodies rather become dead bodies in the name of Jesus. So Jesus. Jesus. Okay, um, let me give you the three ways. It's about seven, but let me give you five. How to activate your angels. Number one is by prayer. When your prayer for your angels are sent, Acts chapter 12, verse 5, when they put the Peter in prison, what happened? So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying. And what happened? When they prayed the night before, he was sleeping in, in soldiers, verse 7, then an angel appeared. So when the church was praying, an angel was released. So the first point to activate your angels is to be part of a praying church. When it happens like that, they come and God remembers you. The second thing, the second thing is to belong to a house of God. Some say, I will belong to a house of God. I will belong to a house of God. Oh, I can say, I will belong to a house of God. I will belong to a 
house of God. You know, what, 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 what we just read about God sending one angel to kill 185,000 soldiers, men, it happened because somebody went to God by the altar of the temple. It, it happened in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. That's where the soldiers died. But before they died, they died in 35. Before they died, let's see where the angels were activated. Verse 20. Verse 20. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent message to Hezekiah. Because at that time, Hezekiah went to the altar of Jehovah. Verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 14. When he received the letter, he went to the temple of the Lord. Say the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. Ask your neighbor, which temple do you belong to? Which temple do you belong to? No, don't say power worship international. The temple you belong to is the temple you put your sacrifice on. The temple you belong to is the temple you put your tight on. You can't belong to every temple. Where you are fed is where you put your tithe and your sacrifice. Ask your neighbor, where is your temple? Where is your temple? Now the answer, most of you, the answer is not power of worship international. When God sent an angel to kill 185,000 soldiers, you were happy. But it didn't just happen overnight. Somebody went to the temple. Where's your temple? Where's your temple? Do you only come there to receive what you can receive from there? Or you are part of the building of the place. Where's your sacrifice? Where's your tithe? That is what activates your angel. Those who are clapping, you are Christians. Oh, I can't feel, I can't feel you. So number one is prayer. Number two is the temple. Now the third one is an altar. Angels are always positioned by the altar. Revelation chapter 14, verse 17. Let's go. Okay, yeah, let's go. It says, another angel came out of the temple in heaven. Even in heaven, there's a temple. And the angels in heaven, they're in the temple of heaven. And, I don't, and, and, and that's what I'm talking about. He, he, he had a sickle, sickle, a weapon. Let's go to it. Look at it right now. Still another angel who had charge of fire. So one angel of fire. Came from the, came from the altar. Came from the altar. So angels are activated from the altar. The angel came from the altar. And which altar speaks for you? Ask your neighbor, which altar speaks for you? Which altar speaks for you? Give them answer. Let me see. Now, after they give the answer, tell them it's your it's your tight on that altar. It's your tight on that altar. It's your sacrifice on that altar. It's your sacrifice on that altar. The altar your tight is on is what fight for you. And that's where angels are activated and taken away from to fight on your life. Somebody shout angels. Shout one more time. Angel. For the last time. Angel. Number four is a man of God who speaks on your life. A man of God. Second Kings 19.20. The eight, 185,000 men died because of one angel, because of one thing. Second case, it says, Then Isaiah, son of Amos, went to Hezekiah and said, This is what the Lord says I have heard your prayer concerning the nature of the king of Assyria. God used a man of God. Tell somebody, You need a man of God. You need a man of God. And ask your neighbor, Who is your man of God? Who is your man of God? Oh, who is your man of God? 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 That one don't answer. That one too. How do you identify your man of God? The man of God who speaks into your life. It's not the man of God you run to when there's trouble only. The man of God you respect and revere the anointing and place your sacrifice on his altar. The way some of you are not clapping, I think most of you are guilty. The next one is this. Be holy. Run away from sin. If you want angels to come around your life, be holy. Run away from sin. Tell somebody, run away from sin. Run away from sin. Some of you, worst people are run away from sin. You are chasing the sin. When the Bible says, flee by you, there, you are chasing the sin. If you are chasing the sin, your angels run away from you. Tell somebody, run away from the sin. Run away from the sin. Let me give you the last one. 
have plenty, but I think I'll continue next week. Now we have an angel that is called the angel of death. Say angel of death. Angel of death. One more time. Angel of death. Now, this angel of death can be sent from God. And when God sends the angel of death, everybody get this revelation very well. When God sends the angel of death, he sends the angel of death to kill our enemies. But unfortunately, the devil is so bad that he tried to use counterfeit. He knows that God has angel of death. Then the angel, the devil too, has angels of death. So at any point in time, whilst you are praying to God, any angel of death from God, let it go to my enemy's camp and kill them. But any angel of death from the enemy, I block it. Amen. Don't forget that. 12 verse 23, Exodus, let's go. I want to give you some mysteries about the angel of death. He says, give me NLT. He says, for the Lord will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down the Egyptians when he but uh -huh. but when he sees the blood on the door frame the Lord will pass over your home he will not permit what the death angel to enter your house and strike you down so God will not permit the death angel so it's called the angel of death and the only way the angel of death can jump over you not to come close to you is when there is blood on your house what is blood blood is sacrifice have you sacrificed unto god when the death angel is coming what saves you is your blood that's the sacrifice when i have 100 cities and i give god 90 or 95 it is sacrifice when i have 100 and I give God only five. It's not sacrifice. I've offered. It's offering. What blocks the angel of death is your sacrifice. Tell somebody, where is your sacrifice? Where is your sacrifice? Anytime the subject of sacrifice comes up in the life of the believer, sometimes we think it's a gimmick, but in the spiritual realm, it does a lot of things. Is that the only way the death angel can stop coming is for one reason. When there is blood in front of the house. So if there's no blood in front of your house, anything can enter. But today, if you are here in your life, you have not sacrificed before. May God by his blood forgive you. Yeah. And from today, oh, I can feel somebody. Yeah. May God forgive us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And today, may God give us a new page on how we can sacrifice before him. Amen. In that conference of the about to break in, we go to sacrifice. That God, look at this blood and save me and my family. And if God is God, God will keep you, preserve you, and bless your life. Amen. Let me give another thing to about the death angel. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse. Let me see the verse. Second Samuel chapter 24. Let me show you this. One day David sinned, and God said, I'm going to bring disaster. He gave three, David chose one, and the one was that death angel will go and kill people. So one day, the death angel showed up. From morning to evening, he killed about 17,000 or 70,000. He killed plenty of them. Look at it here. Yeah. He says, so the Lord sent a plague. And for three days, he said, from morning, 70,000 people died from the death angel. Let's continue. But as the angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem, God said to the death angel, stop, it is enough. Prophet Daniel. If death angel is working and fighting, how can God say stop? It's for one reason. I'll tell you why God was able to tell the death angel stop. If death angel is fighting in your family, there's only one thing you need to do to stop it. And the answer is here. Check it right now. I come to show you. God said to the death angel, stop. That is enough. At that moment, the angel of the Lord was by the treasure floor of Aruna. Verse 17. Then when David saw the angel, he said to the Lord, I'm the one who has sinned. What have they done? Let your anger leave me. The answer is in 18. Look at the 18. That day, God came to David and said, Go up and build what? An altar. And build what? An altar. And build what? An altar. An altar on the 
threshing floor of the man. So the threshing floor of the man, let's say, is the man's farm. So the prophet said, go and build an altar on the man's farm. So when the angel of death got there, the angel of death stopped. 16, it stopped in 16. 16, look at it right now. It says, the woman God says, stop, it is enough. The angel was by where? The treasure floor. So the, the area God stopped at death was by the treasure floor. Where an altar was built. Ask somebody, where is your altar? Where is your altar? So anytime God sees an altar, no matter what, everything has to cease. Today, whether you have an altar or not, we use this altar as a point of contact. Jesus. That if there's any disaster, any crisis coming against you, may God look at this altar and set your life free right now. Amen. So, Jesus, Jesus, be on your feet. I had a lot to give to you, but we'll continue and finish on next week before the conference begins. In Jesus' name, lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. My assignment is to give you mysteries in the word of God that will change your life and change your destiny in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand right now, my God. Say by fire. By fire. I can't say by fire. By fire. I activate. I activate. Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael. I activate. I activate. Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael. Any weapon. Any weapon. Any disaster. Any disaster. Coming close to me. Coming close to me. Or my family. Or my family. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey. Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. You and your angels. You and your angels. Start working now. Start working now. No. no. Somebody, despite Archangel Michael. Yeah, despite Archangel Michael. Yeah, let them stop fighting. Yeah, let them stop fighting. Yeah, despite them. Yeah, no. Yeah, despite them. Yeah, We thank God for that powerful, powerful word from Prophet Daniel Amoting. I think in our book, when you when you see his name in our book, you have to put a dash after his last name. So it's Prophet Dash, uh, Prophet Daniel Dash Amoting. The dash is missing in the book, but Prophet Daniel Dash Amoting. Powerful, powerful man of God. When you try to go to the site where you can watch all the videos on angels. I thank God for his mercy, for his kindness. Truly, the Lord is good and worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Uh, just before we close out, I want to sing this song. I first heard it a few years back. Uh, my, my friend, um, Pastor Vincent Ross, his sister sang this song. And when I first heard it, oh my goodness, like, yes, I love this song. I'm going to sing a little bit of it. I lift my hands in humble adoration unto you. You reign upon the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in humble adoration unto you. You reign upon the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. 
I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Be blessed, be encouraged, be uplifted until we meet again. Remember, our book uh, is um, at tinyurl.com forward slash follow me on Amazon. Be blessed, be encouraged, be uplifted. There is no secret to what God can do, what he's done for others. He can do the same thing for you.